Welcome one and all to Lie Like 10. This is a little web series where once a month I create my own top 10 lists on something anime related. Now about 80% of all anime is adapted from manga, light novels, and video games, but sometimes we get adaptations or characters from other fictional works or from moments in history. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 fictional historical characters turned anime badasses. Now I gotta warn you, this is one where spoilers probably won't be avoided very well, so just to be warned before you continue on with this list. Let's get started. Are you familiar with the Jack the Ripper tale from England? Well, Japan seems to love to add that story into the anime sometimes, but not normally with the best results. Personally, my favorite version of the story comes to us from Black Butler in the form of Madame Red and Grell Sutcliffe. Steele's aunt Madame Red starts off as a rather outgoing and cheery woman. However, once the Jack the Ripper case closes in, we learn that it was Madame who was involved all along. Because of a rather tragic past, this caused the attention of Grell, a grim reaper, and they begin to murder prostitutes. It's actually rather in line with the Jack the Ripper case, from the murderers of prostitutes to the murderer possessing surgical skills. It's a rather interesting spin on the Jack the Ripper story, thanks to Madame Red's presence and her backstory, making it into a completely different version. Also, Grell is just too damn fabulous. Oh, my deadly body, dear. Hello, Grell. Why, uh, that isn't my Bessie! Why, what a coincidence running into you. Ooh, oh. This next one you may not realize is based on a historical figure unless you've done some research into the series. Dayon de Beaumont from the Chevalier Dayon wants to avenge the death of his sister Leah at all costs, but his sister now has the tendency to possess his body in order to achieve her own vengeance. And since the two of them look so much alike, there are moments of cross-dressing for Dayon in the series. But what you may not know is that Dayon is actually based on a historical figure from France. It's true, Dayon de Beaumont is a French diplomat and spy during much of the 18th century. Beaumont spent the first 49 years of his life as a man and spent the remaining 33 years as a woman. He actually believed he was anatomically a woman, but doctors who examined his body after his death saw that he was a male. How a transgender historical figure translates into a possessed French spy, I honestly couldn't tell you, but it is an interesting idea. In the name of that truth and loyalty, I shall take my vengeance. The internet is a strange place. Really, it is. But when you add in a sort of historical figure from the internet, it only gets a lot weirder. John Tidor from Steinsgate is seen as an alias used by someone that claims to be a time traveler from 2036, appearing at different times throughout the series. Real world John Tidor uses a similar story that was seen on many forums during the early 2000s as he, again, claimed to be a time traveler from 2036. In his post, Tidor says his mission was to go back to 1975 to retrieve an IBM 5100 computer in order to debug other computer programs back in 2036. I'll admit, I still haven't seen Science Gate yet, so I can't really go too much further into this entry as well as my number 7, but taking some cues from fellow time travelers doesn't seem like a bad idea. Speaking of series I haven't seen, I needed a little bit of help to find more fictional historical characters to add to this list, so I asked a few friends. And one of the more intriguing ones that I found for this list was Escaflone's Isaac Dornkirk. A former scientist from Earth, Isaac learned about a force called gravity and believed that everything in the universe is caused by a force, even fate and destiny. He's transported into the world of Gaia, becoming its emperor after, quote unquote, saving the rural people of Zybok with his knowledge. Does the name Isaac and the whole gravity thing sound familiar to you? If so, that's because Dornkirk is based on Sir Isaac Newton, though this is never really confirmed in the series itself. Newton, of course, is a renowned physicist and mathematician who's most famous for his laws of motion and universal gravity. Again, haven't seen the series, but having a scientist as a villain makes for a more intriguing story, if you ask me. Bella is rather interesting to see. I saw a production of Nutcracker several months ago and I enjoyed it, but why am I bringing up ballets? That's because of my number 6 fictional character turned anime badass, Princess Tutu's Drosselmeyer. In the series, Drosselmeyer is the author of many stories that somehow seem to be connected to the world that Duffy's living in. He's also the one who gave our little friend her ability to become human, as well as the talented Princess Tutu. But here's the kicker. Drosselmeyer and Ballet are actually more closely connected to one another than we actually see. In the Nutcracker, the character of Drosselmeyer is the godfather of our heroine Clara, and is the one who gives the Nutcracker to her. He is also a magician, as he is the cause of everything else that happens in the ballet. If you've never seen a production of the Nutcracker, then you should, because then you'll get to see what the clever Drosselmeyer has in store. These next two entries on this list are from full adaptations of fictional works, and in the case of number 5, a classic Shakespearean play. Juliet from Romeo X Juliet is quite a bit different from her female counterpart. 
Her fictional counterpart is much more gentle and docile, going along with what Romeo has planned for the two of them, and ends up failing at tricking the others as to her death, and kills herself anyways to be with her love. What Romeo makes Julia did with the story is turn Julia into the last living Capulet thanks to Lord Montague's schemes to take the throne. This gives Juliet a much more humbler upbringing and gives her a secret identity in order to hide from Montague's sight until her 16th birthday. Not only that, but she becomes a defender of justice for the people of Nea Verona, known as the Red Whirlwind. So she's one tough noble, making her a rather badass anime character. What manner of man are you? Release these maidens or drown with your iniquities in your own blood! Up next in the anime adaptation department is a classic novel turned into a very colorful sci-fi series with a very interesting man in its core, Edmund Dantes, aka The Count of Monte Cristo. This adaptation is a little bit different than Romeo X Juliet because it follows Alexandre Dumas' novel rather closely, but with a few major changes. Those being the perspective of the series being shifted from Dantes to Albert, and the figment known as Goncutsuo. Because of these changes, this makes Dantes a much more mysterious and dangerous man as he tries to bring the men responsible for his imprisonment crumbling down to the ground. Gunkosu is actually seen by some as the most faithful adaptation of Dumas' novel, even with the changes, and I totally agree. But you know, Joji Nakata and Jameson Price making the ladies squeal with their voices may have something to do with it. So later is a fun series. Not gonna lie, it's actually one of the series that got me back into anime, and it has a very awesome villain during the first half of the series. Medusa Gorgon is a witch with an affinity for snakes that tries to turn DWMA on its head. This character is based on the popular Greek mythological figure Medusa, a gorgon with snakes for hair and would turn you into stone if you ever made eye contact with her. Although no one actually turned into stone when Soul Eater's Medusa was around, many would still be terrified of her and what she's capable of. She's cunning and devious and has whatever it takes to get what she wants, even if it means she dies just to take over the body of a child and wreak even more havoc vampires. They've been around for a long time and they're probably not going away anytime soon. So vampire lore needs a badass vampire to keep the pansy ones at bay, and I think Alucard from Helsing fits the bill rather nicely. In Helsing, Alucard is the vampire who works for Integra in order to keep those crazy Nazis at bay. But the biggest surprise of all actually comes to us towards the end of both the manga and the OVA series, where it's revealed that Alucard is really Count Dracula creating a much more crazy and devious version of this fictional vampire, as well as a badass anime character. But there is one glaring hint to that little secret, I wonder what that may be. Releasing control odd restriction systems, three, two, one. Approval of Situation A recognized, commencing the Cromwell Invocation. Ability restrictions lifted for limited use until the enemy has been rendered silent. Here we are, my number one character turned anime badass. This one may also be a no-brainer, but we've already seen some good characters on this list, so what else is there? Maybe a little Fate Zero standout action from the ever-wonderful Saber? Yes? Okay, good. Saber is a servant that serves various masters during the Holy Grail Wars. She has a sense of moral justice and will fight for the sake of her own honor. Also, she has a really incredible sword she uses to defend herself. If any of this sounds familiar to you, that's because Saber is actually King Arthur brought into fight in the Grail War. This isn't really explained in Fate Stay Night until later on in the series due to Saber's memory loss, but it's told right away in Fate Zero, which is the prequel to Stay Night. This female version of the popular fictional king manages to portray the qualities of her fictional counterpart really well, and seeing as how we don't often get to see a female king kicking so much ass, I'll gladly keep Saber here at number one. <laughs> Top 10 fictional historical characters turned anime badasses. Am I missing someone? Let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to my channel in order to get more videos and check out the blog for much more. Until next time, Otaku on my friends.